Whether you like it or not, having the right settings is crucial for wildlife photography because if you have the wrong settings dialed in to your camera, this could lead to over or underexposed, blurry images and so on and you will just not go home with the result that you had in your mind. So today I want to show you exactly all the settings that I'm using for taking bird and wildlife pictures with my Canon R5 and this is pretty much identical actually to the R6 and some settings are also very similar for other Canon mirrorless cameras such as the R3 and the R7 even though if you're shooting an R7 I already made a video just about the R7 so you might want to check that out instead and I also want to stress that these are the settings that I prefer but it doesn't mean that they are perfect for you but I think they should still give you a good starting point to have an idea with which settings you can start and then along the road just uh, adapt them to your own shooting style. So I just did a factory reset of my camera so all settings are now as they would be when I got mine shipped and the first thing I will do is um, switch the shooting mode to manual just because if I remember correctly in uh, P I don't have all the settings I want and also for another trick I want to show you later. So the first thing I want to do is actually change the image quality. I'm not I don't like to shoot JPEG, it just doesn't give me enough flexibility. So here I'm going for zero actually. I just switched recently because I found that for my, most of my cases zero gives me really good enough quality and it saves quite some space and more importantly gives me a larger buffer. Um, I will not use dual pixel raw. Um, I will also not set a predefined crop in my camera. So here I leave many things at the base and I'm only mentioning the things that I think are really important or that I change. So I would leave these settings here that are kind of adjusting the exposure or the highlight handling on off even if you shoot in raw they are not affecting the raw directly but they affect the embedded jpeg file and it can slow the camera down um, i'm also not configuring anything for my for an external flash so i will just skip this the white balance is the first thing i will change here i just prefer to shoot with um, sun um, daylight white balance basically all the time. I think it just gives me a good starting point when I'm out taking pictures. I don't want to uh, imp like fine-tune this anymore. The color space, I th many people argue for Adobe RGB and if I would shoot JPEG I would also switch this but I honestly need to say if you shoot RAW it really doesn't matter. The picture style is something that is also only influencing the embedded JPEG but some people like to change this because it's just the look of the image that you have on the camera when you're reviewing the images. And if you choose something like neutral or faithful, it gives you kind of a flatter image, which is more close to the actual RAW file, meaning that the histogram and the over and under exposure warnings will be more accurate. However, I don't like the look of this rather yeah flat image. I actually prefer just to leave it at standard. But as I said, it doesn't ma uh, matter so much here. The lens aberration controls are designed to kind of compensate for some uh, well, shortcomings of the specific lens. However, this is only relevant if you use Canon Digital Professional Photo as your RAW converter. I don't like this one, so I will turn them all off here. Let's switch to the next tab. Um, the long exposed noise correction. For wildlife, this is not really important. For landscape, I would maybe turn this on. The high ISO um, noise reduction again is only important if you shoot JPEG. So I will also turn this off. I will also skip this here completely. So the shutter mode is actually quite an interesting one and this is one that I change from time to time. Usually I tend to shoot in the electronic shutter. This just gives me 20 frames a second. The camera is completely silent which is a nice bonus. and it's also not introducing any type of shake because there are no moving parts, meaning if the shutter speed is a bit longer, I tend to get a bit sharper results. On the other hand, there are also some downsides. For example, there can be the so-called rolling shutter effect and the dynamic range is reduced to 12-bit depth. Um, 
this is usually not a big issue for me because even if you shoot with a mechanical shutter if you go above a certain ISO I think it's around 800 for the R5 the dynamic range I mean the higher you go with the ISO the lower the dynamic range gets and I think at 800 is this point where it reaches around 12 bit anyway so there you won't see a difference between the electronic and mechanical shutter so yes most of the times I leave it in electronic um, if I have if I'm shooting backlit with really low ISO let's say 100 or 400 and I have the feeling I'm kind of happy about the high dynamic range I don't need the fastest frame rate then I might, might switch to the mechanical one release shutter without card I highly encourage you to disable this I hope you never forget to put the memory card into the camera but in case you do at least the camera is not taking pictures and you might realize soon that there is no card yeah I don't like this touch shutter because it means if I touch on the screen it's already taking a picture the image review I'm always turning this off because I want to shoot continuously and don't see the images I want to see the settings again after um, of course I want to have the exposure simulation enabled so that I see how bright the image will be more or less and here is the information uh, like customization of the shooting information so here you can already select if you don't want some of these screens um, usually I'm not having the screen off because I just flip have the screen flipped in most of the time anyway I sometimes like to have the settings panel here um, I just tend to leave all of them and the nice thing is you can edit them if you press the info screen and then say what you want to have and what not if you want the histogram if you don't want to have it if you want these on-screen buttons that you can touch um, I think I would most of the cases just leave this to standard but this is really per personal preference and it's not changing so much here we have the same for the viewfinder again I'm not changing a lot here I'm also not putting any type of grid it could be like a 3 times 3 or 6 times 4 grid in the viewfinder or on the back of the screen I find it a bit too distracting for me the histogram here I leave it on brightness I don't need all the different channels but I put it a bit smaller I find it otherwise a bit too distracting I think if I go back here you can already see now we have it small in the frame whereas before it was quite large um, I like to always have the focusing distance or to have the focusing distance shown when I'm focusing and since I'm a European I'm using meters and I think that's it for this one so here I can choose how I want to have the viewfinder format I prefer to have this large one and having the settings overlaid and finally I'm putting the display on uh, the viewfinder on a like performance setting so meaning I have a more fluent experience even though this might cause a bit might cause the battery to drain a bit more but for me just if I'm shooting birds and they are moving I really want to have a smooth experience and now we get to a really important one and this is the autofocus so the most important here change the one shot to AI servo meaning that's continuously adjusting the focus if the bird is or whatever animal you're taking pictures of is moving um, I'm going here for the spot AF this is my the mm, focusing method I use most of the time sometimes also the single point but mostly spot the subject to detect you might have guessed it it's animals and not people and yeah this actually makes quite a di difference the continuous autofocus is something you really want to have disabled even though I think the name sounds maybe a bit weird because for Nikon and Sony continuous autofocus is the same as AI servo but what is meant here is that the camera is always focusing whether you press any button or not I don't like it it's dra draining the battery and I want to determine when I want to focus touch and drag autofocus can be quite nice it's basically gives you the option to use um, part of your rear screen to move the autofocus around when you have the camera uh, with the viewfinder to your eye even though I need to say I'm not having this enabled because most of the time as I said I have the screen flipped in so it's a bit more protected and I prefer the joystick because I live in Switzerland we often have cold weather and while my gloves still work with the touch screen they're just not as precise so I'm having this disabled but I highly encourage you to at least try it out 
Um, the manual focus peaking settings, I just have this on. This means if I switch to manual focus, I have like an overlay with these red lines where the image is sharp and where not. I'm not using this often for wildlife, but I prefer it. Same for the focusing guides, but again, <laughs> I'm not using my lens often with manual focus. And here we have these different autofocus cases. This is what I'm still a bit struggling. I'm not sure if I found the perfect one. Usually um, I'm taking case one and then I'm modifying it a bit, um, meaning that I put down the tracking sensitivity so that the autofocus point kind of stays a bit more locked on the subject and is not moving so quickly to another one. For example, if there's something appearing before, this uh, subject. So this can be, for example, really nice if you're taking pictures of a duck that is flying by and then suddenly it's going behind a small bush and then the appearing again. If you have this tracking sensitivity to the minus, it will stay locked on the duck even if it's disappearing behind the bush for a while and then reappearing. If you have it rather to the plus, it will immediately switch to the bush in the foreground. And usually once the camera is locked on a thing, I prefer to stay it there. And I also have the feeling with the eye autofocus, the R5 is a bit erratic. So I prefer that it's a bit more calm and stays on where it is. Here I also need to say, like for the accelerating and decelerating tracking, um, I put this a tiny bit to plus sometimes when shooting birds in flight, especially if there's a bird coming and landing in front of me where it's really decelerating. But I think compared to sports, this is still not a huge change in velocity, not a huge acceleration. So for here, I will also leave this on zero. Um, this here is something that is just uh, applicable for one shot, so it doesn't concern me too much. So the switching to tracked subject sounds a bit similar than the servo reactivity. And it kind of is, the difference here is that it, for the servo reactivity, it was what I mentioned before, like there's a bush appearing in front of the duck or you temporarily lose the subject just because you move your autofocus area or point a bit away. While this one here talks specifically about subjects. I think this setting might be more important in sports where you have different subjects, maybe for a flock of birds where the camera can really detect different ones. Um, I'm keeping here uh, on uh, initial priority, but I think a one would also be fine. I would just not go for two personally. I prefer if, because I, for me, the AF as mentioned is a bit too chumpy sometimes. So I prefer if it sticks a bit more. Lens drive and AF is impossible. This just tries to continue to acquire focus even if it's not locking on. I prefer this. I'm not limiting my focus methods anymore actually. Um, it takes a bit longer to scroll through them, but almost all of them I'm using at least sometimes. And then it's super annoying if I want to use one and it's not there. I will keep the MFN button for going through the different autofocus methods. And finally here, the orientation linked autofocus point. I really like to have a separate point for horizontal and vertical. This can be super handy. If let's say my face or the face of a heron is on the top here, if you shoot horizontal, if you now switch the camera vertical, you don't want that it's going to the left. You might want to have it still on the top. So here you basically can just have different autofocus points or different autofocus point positions, whether you shoot horizontal or vertical. So I'm keeping this here on auto. This will also stay on auto for me. Um, here, I prefer to go a bit on plus, just meaning that the, I can move the focusing point quicker with the joystick. And finally, the electronic full-time AF, I'm also keeping this activated. It means that at every time I can just turn the focus ring on the newer lenses that have electronic focus, such as this RF 100 to 500, and I can quickly change the focus without stopping the or switching to manual focus before, and I really like this feature. So let's move to the blue playback menu here. Um, here I'm basically not changing anything. Just sometimes I like to do an image copy from one card to the other if I don't have my computer and I want to do a quick backup, but this is something else. Also not printing or doing a photo book. Um, same here, I'm not really editing the images in camera. Um, what I'm changing here, I like to have the 
image magnification to the actual size, I mean really a lot, and then to the selected autofocus point, because this is where I want to uh, judge the sharpness and not in the middle or somewhere else. I usually like to jump by 10 pictures with the dial on top of the camera. Um, and here I basically kept it on the same, meaning that if I click the rate button shortly, it's uh, putting a star rating, one, two, three, four, five, how often I press it. If I um, press it and hold it, it would just uh, make a voice memo, which I'm never using. Here the playback information display, I tend to disable some of them. It just takes me time to scroll through and I really don't care about some settings. Um, basically, I just keep these three and I could also further adjust, for example, here I only want the brightness a histogram here as well, even though actually both are showing up. So I'm not sure what the difference here is actually. Anyway, I think that's about it. I'm enabling the highlight alert, which is just giving me these blinkies to show that some expo uh, parts are overexposed. And this is a nice addition to the histogram because the histogram is just telling me maybe a tiny bit of the picture is overexposed, but I want to know which part because if some water droplets are overexposed, this might be totally fine. However, it's a part, part of the bird uh, face or feathers, this might not be so good. I also like to have the um, autofocus point displayed. It already gives me a clue if the picture is sharp or not. And otherwise it lets me know if I made the mistake or not. Um, I sometimes put the playback grid I don't like it through taking the pictures, but for reviewing a bit. But I take this off from time to time as well. The rest here is film related, so not important. I usually put the camera on airplay mode just to save a bit of battery. And I will now not go into the details how I couple this with my phone. For selecting the card and folder, what I basically do is I save both images and videos on the same this uh, card mostly for the reason because I cannot save my high quality video files on the SD card, it's just not possible. So I'm going here to auto switch card. Same goes for video, not so important. And then here I have the option to make the one a priority card. At the moment, as you can see, I don't have a second card in, but this means if I remove the first card and I put it back in, usually what it's doing is switching to the card that has always stayed in. And I don't like this at all because this is the small SD card if I'm only shooting on the CF Express. So next time I'm taking pictures, I'm writing to the slow F SD card. I might run into buffer issues or the movie will not even start recording. So it's really nice that Canon implemented this in a uh, firmware update. The file name I usually change to R51, so meaning it's my R5 Mark 1, if ever a Mark 2 would come out. I just like that if in Lightroom, Capture One, whatever, I quickly see on the file name already with which camera I took it. Um, yes, so this one is not so important. The power saving, usually I leave it to a bit less, like uh, five minutes or something. Now I extended it that the screen is not going off. Again, here I'm leaving basically everything on the default. Here as well, maybe important is to um, close here the shutter when you turn off the camera. It's just a nice protection for dust. The sensor cleaning, um, I have it at powering off. I think again, it's a nice measure because sometimes I see I have some dust points and if I take a picture one hour later, they're gone. So it must have been through the automatic sensor cleaning when I switch back on and off the camera. Um, I will get back to these settings here in a second. Um, copyright information, I usually put here my name and my email, but I will not do this now, it's a bit long. Now let's switch to the custom functions or however they're called in English. So here again, most of the stuff I leave as it was. Um, what I like here is uh, same exposure for new aperture. This is interesting for lenses like the RF 100 to 500 that have a variable aperture. So let's say I start shooting with f 4.5 at 100 millimeters in manual mode. Now I zoom in to 500 millimeters, I get f 7.1. So the image will get considerably darker. And what I can say here is that it's automatically adjusting um, either the ISO or the shutter speed 
to match this new aperture. That's a feature I really like. I put it on ISO because usually the shutter speed is something I want to maintain. But in these cases, I allow, even though I'm in manual mode, I kind of allow the camera to override the ISO for me. Um, the restrict shooting modes, this is something I actually enable. Um, I don't really like the this FVP TV, even MF. I'm just keeping my custom functions and maybe an M. So this just means I can switch through them a bit faster. I don't like to set a shutter speed range or set aperture range. I'm also leaving these two here, the, the way they're turning and quite used to this. Now we're getting, getting into some in, something interesting and this is the customization of buttons. So I leave the out of the shutter as a autofocus start measuring and of course if I press it completely taking the picture this is maybe a bit controversial I like to have the movie button here quickly also keep the mode one the AF on I'm actually I mean this is already what my shutter button is doing so no point of having it the same so I'm putting it for eye detection AF so this means basically my camera is set to spot me, spot AF and the second I press the AF on it switches to IAF. So that's super nice because I can switch really fast between these two, two, the two methods because the IAF is amazing at most times but sometimes it just fails and like this I have a quick change. Um, the star button I assign this to switch to a specific um, shooting function. For example if suddenly I have birds that are taking off so I will go to this one here, click on info. I want to have a manual exposure. I want to have a pretty quick shutter speed. Um, the aperture, just keep it as it was before. This means I'm taking off the box. The ISO speed for here, I keep it on automatic because I don't know how the situation will be. I keep the metering mode. I keep the exposure at zero. White balance, well, let's keep it the same as I'm shooting already. AF method, this I will change to eye tracking, tracking sensitivity, as you might recall, I prefer to have it here, even on the minus two, accelerating, decelerating, maybe on a plus one, and of course I want to have the AF operation on. So that's basically it. Don't make the mistake to go and register current settings. This will register the settings you had dialed in before, not this one you set here. So meaning I now just go back to menu and click OK. And if I go again, you will see that it's in fact having the ones we just entered. Um, I leave this here for the AF selection. I'm not using the depth of field preview, so I'm assigning this to something else. And here I actually like to turn up the brightness of the viewfinder. If I can find the function again, yes, here. So this is sometimes nice in backlit situations where the Everything, the whole scenery looks quite dark in my viewfinder, but it should also be a bit over uh, underexposed. I can just press this button and for a second it will lighten up. It helps me to see some details that I might miss otherwise. And also for, um, yeah, for, for having the whole composition, it can help. I'm not using it that often. The button on the lens, I have it currently to autofocus off, not using this so often and not all of my lenses have it. Um, the MFN is at the moment the dial function here. This is something I'm not the biggest fan. I don't need this so often. So what I'm actually doing is uh, switching to um, a custom between the custom shooting modes. So if I only have C1 and C2 enabled, this means I can really quickly change between C1 and C2. I really like this feature. I will leave this. Um, I put this here on changing the exposure if I'm in manual with auto ISO, if this makes sense. Not that I use it often, but I prefer to have it. And very important, the joystick for me should be a direct selector of the autofocus point so that I don't need to press a button before, but immediately can start moving the thing around. Again, I will skip the part of the video settings here. Customizing the dials. Um, actually, no, I'm quite fine with the way they are. I'm quite used to this. So basically this looks good. This one here, 
yeah not really affecting this lens but i don't like if the lens is coming in so that's basically it what i really like is here this my menu where i can add specific um points menu points that i use a lot to this menu so for one here i select items to register so as i mentioned before i sometimes like to change the shutter mode so i put this here um I'm not 100% sure what else I'm like. I like to change a lot in sh in the photo shooting. I usually have some video functions here, but you can put whatever you want here. Um, I think this can be quite nice because it just gives you a quick quick way to access the most used uh, menu functions. So now let's leave the menu and quickly check the settings we have. Um, if I just go out and take pictures of birds that are not flying, I just want to set some basic settings now. Usually I start with the 500th of a second, the aperture is completely open now, and ISO, I have the feeling 800 is not the worst starting point. Uh, one thing I of course forgot to change here, as you can see, is putting it to the high speed shooting mode. And I think the rest looks kind of good to me. So now with all these settings we have and all the menu settings, I will register them to this C1. So this is custom shooting mode, register to C1, okay. Um, so basically what this means is if I switch from manual here to C1, as you can see it's a manual and it's having these settings. At the moment if I turn something around, I switch back to manual and I go back to C1, it's again at, at this what I had in the beginning. I prefer if this is so-called auto-updated so that if I change something, it will stay. And what I will do now is register a second one to C2. This is my go-to for flying birds. Since this is for flying birds or fast moving subjects, I don't like the spot AF. I much prefer either the expanded area or the focus or maybe even the zone, this might depend. Um, and also I need a much faster shutter speed, of course, and generally also higher ISO. Um, I can also change a tiny bit the way the autofocus is, is reacting. If you recall, um, I can here put the tracking sensitivity down a bit more and put it here up. And I think otherwise we're quite Good. And also now, as you can see, if I press the MFM button, I can quickly cycle through this C1, C2, C3. Usually C3 I keep for landscapes or macro work, where I don't need the high frame rate and some other settings. And you might now wonder, what is the difference if I press this start button, where it's changing to manual with two thousands of a second, blah, 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 and this other autofocus, and if I switch to C2. Well, I'm keeping C, um, just pressing the star button if suddenly some action happens. Um, because there, as you recall, I have a bit less control. I set the, auto, the ISO to auto, the shutter speed is fixed, cannot be changed, etc. So this is great for a quick change. On the other hand, if I shoot a lot of moving subjects, I take the C2 immediately. And what I'm actually doing here is a changing, changing the function um, button here again, also to the shooting to recall a shooting mode but now i'm doing exactly the opposite so i'm taking a 500th of a second keeping the aperture iso auto um, i kind of need to keep face detect here or because if i put a spot focus i cannot really move it but i will put the tracking sensitivity to minus one put this to zero and have this so basically if i'm in c2 and i press the star button I'm ready for more or less sitting birds. On the other hand, if I'm here in C1 and I press the star button, I'm ready for flying birds. So this was kind of a long video, but these were all the settings that I changed on my R5 for pictures. And I really hope they can give you, as I mentioned, a nice starting point that you can go out and have your camera basically set up in a nice way that should deliver you good images in many situations and also allow you uh, to quickly change and adjust the camera again for different situations that you might encounter. If the video helped you then please leave a like and um, subscribe to the channel and I hope you see you in the next one. Bye!